What's going on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBCU Pulse and the host of HBCU Pulse Radio on Sirius XM. And I did not expect to do a broadcast on today, but I have to. And we already know what this is about. It is in the regards of Bethune Cookman's new head coach, I guess, Ed Reed. Ed Reed on Saturday did an Instagram Live, and at the end of his Instagram Live, he talked about how Deion Sanders, who was the former head coach of Jackson State and the current head coach of Colorado, wasn't wrong. And he said that HBCUs needed help and that he was going to help HBCUs in general. He was going to start with Bethune-Cookman, and he had done more at Bethune-Cookman in a week and a half as coach than folks that worked at Bethune-Cookman for years. Prime was not wrong about what he was saying. All y'all out there with y'all opinions, full of crap, don't know this shit. But needless to say, I just pulled up to work. Try to, um, we're going to try to help y'all too, man, because I know a lot of HBCs need help. I'm just here to help here first. I see it all too clearly. All our HBCs need help. HBCUs need help. And they need help because of the people who's running it. It's broken mentalities out here. I'm gonna leave y'all with that, man. I gotta get in the office. I hope y'all be blessed out there. 336, I see you, my bro. About to pull up in the office, bro. I gotta get out here. My guy's already out here working. I've been here for a week and a half. I've been here for a week and a half and have done more than people that have been here in freaking years. And I'm not even hired yet. Damn shame. I holla. So we took to Twitter to talk about how that was uncalled for. He has the savior complex that we criticize Deion Sanders for. And that although there are issues that HBCUs have to deal with, it's not as simplistic as Ed Reed was making it seem. And a celebrity of Ed Reed's stature, a great Hall of Fame football player, he was great at his position. He was a, a safety, a defensive back, what have you. He has a platform in which he is not correctly informing people that follow him and that are interested in him being a coach of what the issues of HBCUs are. Are. So we criticized him. We spoke out about it. We've gone at detractors that are like, oh, well, HBCUs have this and that going on. And we've talked about how Ed Reed hasn't coached the game. He has, he's not even been announced as the head coach officially outside of a tweet and reports. So it's not been an introductory press conference yet. And Ed Reed is saying there's so many problems and I can fix it. So Ed Reed, I guess, saw our comments on Twitter and on social media. And he decided to hop back on Instagram Live and be demonstrative and curse us all out and showcase what he believes is problems and imperfections with Bethune Cookman's campus. I've been mutton and showing this. I chose not to. But now I'm out here walking with the football team, picking up trash. But I'm mutton us. Man, get out of here, man. I should leave. I'm not even under contract doing this. I'm mutton us. Man, get out of here, man. They mutt me. These I didn't even clean my, my office when I got here. I'm mutting y'all. Get the hell, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All this shit here was trash in front of me. Who you think got this shit cleared out? That building right there got trash in it. It's you know, trash. What are you talking about? I need no man, doc donors to come out and help out because people just want money. That's why I don't have, that's why I don't with social network. Fuck out of here, man. This is when I realized that I had to do a video on today to give clarity on at least how I feel. And I believe if I give clarity on how I feel as Randall Barnes, I can give clarity to everyone that's starting to see what's going on in this situation on how HBCU alumni feel. First and foremost, as an HBCU alumni, I love all the 100 and plus HBCUs around the nation. As the founder of HBCU Pulse and the host of HBCU Pulse Radio, I want to spotlight HBCUs in the best way that we can. And I want to see HBCUs win. 
When Ed Reed was hired as Bethune Cookman's head coach, we all were excited because we are glad he's starting his coaching career with an HBCU. And we know he has a wealth of football knowledge and he has a great knowledge of the game. And we want to see Bethune Cookman, who had nine winning seasons in the 2010s. Only one season that Bethune Cookman in the 2010s have a losing season. Now, they've had a couple of losing seasons back to back these past couple of years. It's been rough. But Bethune Cookman was a wildly successful program in the 2010s. So we were excited. We were sort of cautious because we had to do with the Deion Sanders experience, all the different things that came with it. But we were still excited. And we were excited to see the team he was going to build and the different things that were going to happen. And we all thought that Ed Reed was not going to be crazy vocal, talking all the talk that Deion Sanders was talking about because a lot of things that Deion Sanders was saying was inaccurate. And if it wasn't straight inaccurate, it was misleading because he didn't have all the facts. But we had to deal with it. People gaslight us, talking about we're wrong, talking about HBCUs, you don't know what's going on, you're being biased. And we just let it go because Jackson State was doing so great and Deion Sanders was bringing some good publicity to the HBCU scene, a little bit of it. So we're minding our business. It's the MLK Day, it's the weekend, AKA Founders Day, Delta Sigma Theta Founders Day was on Friday, AKA Founders Day is happening on, on today, it's Sunday. You have Zeta, Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated Founders Day on Monday. It's a long weekend, it's MLK Day weekend. Folks are celebrating the life and legacy of MLK, they're going to church, they're watching NFL, watching the wild card games. And we all see this video of Ed Reed saying that he has done more for Bethune Cookman in a week and a half than folks that have worked there? Are you kidding me? So number one, you're saying that you've done more than people that to help in rebuilding the infrastructure of Bethune Cookman after it was hit by Hurricane Ian. You've done more for Bethune Cookman than the professors that have worked to build successful professionals from Bethune Cookman. You've done more than them. You've done more than the alumni that they don't, they don't get celebrated. They don't get mentioned, but they donate, they recruit, they promote their institution. You've done more than them. And then you get on Instagram live and you're acting unbecoming of a collegiate head coach in Bethune Cookman gear on Bethune Cookman's campus, cursing out social media detractors showcasing what you deem are imperfections on campus instead of just going to work on it, helping out in the way that you can and not trying to get a pat on the back for it, just doing it. You're falling right into what we were saying about the Deion Sanders situation. As a matter of fact, it's worse. Ed Reed is on some other stuff. Ed Reed really truly believes that he is better than Bethune Cookman University. And I'm sitting back and I'm like, well, dude, why did you take the position? HBCUs have been underfunded. We've said this so many times. It's been underfunded for years. And we have had to do more with little. There's literally been economic crimes that we have not gotten justice for, for our HBCUs have been underfunded. And you have Mr. Celebrity here, Mr. Hall of Famer, come on campus, desecrate that HBCU to say, I alone can fix it. But we're wrong. We should just sit down and roll over for him because, oh, Ed Reed is a Hall of Famer. He can, sure can fix it with limited experience. He was the chief of staff at the University of Miami for two years. No head coaching experience. A Bethune Cookman gave him that opportunity. And all of a sudden, oh, well, I'm going to showcase the campus because there's trash all around. Well, why don't you help out with it? Why do we have to blast that out? Because you saying that and you putting that out there hurts the image of Bethune Cookman more than it's helping. Because that ain't helping nothing but you. That's the problem. Are there issues that go on at HBCUs? There are. But how about you come up with solutions instead of getting on social media and blasting about how you can fix it? Like it's 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 frustrating. I didn't go to Bethune Cookman, but I love Bethune Cookman. I went to Fort Valley State University. But as an HBCU alum, we want to see our HBCUs succeed. And I know that all of us, outside of being a little bit cautious, we're happy for Bethune Cookman. Now you have a situation where, where Bethune Cookman has to make a choice because I don't want my head coach getting on social media, cursing people out. Deion Sanders ain't do that. Since we want to compare everything to Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders didn't get on social media, cursing folks out. I don't want my coach doing that. 
and literally criticizing the campus in which he's supposed to be supporting and promoting. And then letting it be known, I don't have a contract. I'm not even signed yet officially. Demonstratively disrespecting this HBCU on Dr. King's birthday. This man that was the, that was the, the vanguard of justice that was educated at Morehouse College. That is one of the shining symbols of the greatness that can come from HBCUs. On his birthday, you're going to diss HBCUs and diss the HBCU that is going to employ you? That's going to give you an opportunity to become a coach? I need you to leave. That's my opinion. I need you to leave. Because clearly you're not going to value this experience because you believe that you're better than Bethune-Cookman. I don't think this ends well. I honestly think that this is going to end, whether it's today or a few days from now. I don't think Ed Reed is going to be the head coach of Bethune-Cookman. Because there is no way that she, he can hop on a video and say, oh, well, I don't need this. I, I can quit. I can leave. And he stays. And Reggie Theus, who is a celebrity, who is a former NBA player, who is the athletic director of Bethune-Cookman, I think that Reggie Theus either needs to make a hard decision and stop that contract from going through and try to find another head coach because there are other head coaches out there that are do great at Bethune-Cookman, or some conversations need to happen. Maybe after MLK Day, things die down maybe, and the board needs to have a conversation with Mr. Ed Reed, Coach Reed. You can't do that. You cannot desecrate the institution in which you're building up our football program at. And doesn't that make you look crazy? <laughs> like, like you you eventually want to leave Bethune-Cookman and go to quote-unquote higher pastures, become an FBS head coach, do other things at that level. So you think that what you're doing at Bethune-Cookman makes you look good and makes you look attractive to other head coaching jobs. You, you ain't coached it down yet. You ain't got a, your whole recruiting class yet. You ain't had a spring football game yet. You've not had an introductory press conference, and you're trashing the school in which is employing you? And it has to be called out. And now you've opened up the floodgates to folks that do not understand HBC life to dismiss us, disrespect us. Oh, that's, that's what it is, coaching at an HBCU. Well, you're supposed to be promoting us. You're supposed to be bringing athletes and showing athletes to, that, hey, you can make it from here. You're supposed to be building up young men, but you're destroying an HBCU. You're destroying Bethune-Cookman University. The alumni don't deserve that. The students don't deserve that. The players that are still on the football team, they don't deserve that. No HBCU deserves this. And I'll venture to say, no, no university deserves this from their head coach. And that is what I was saying when I did my Randall Sauce. Because there was a lot of folks when I did my editorial on the premiere episode of HBCU Post Radio about celebrity idolatry at HBCUs. Because it happens. There's a culture in the black community and there's a culture in the HBCU community of us thinking that celebrities can make the experience so much better. This ain't better. And what I was saying is that the blueprint was right in front of us. We got to bring in people that actually care about our institutions and that don't think it's a step up or that they're above our institutions. They want to get down. They, they want to build a career here. They want to build a family here and they want to help. They want to authentically help and not help to get a pat on the back. That's all I was saying because this is the fruit of the tree of the Deion Sanders. Oh, Deion Sanders is bringing these celebrity coaches to HBCUs. Now NFL Hall of Famers and former head coaches, they're going to start to consider coaching at HBCUs. This is what has come from that experience. One thing my dad has taught me in my life that has really stuck with me is that don't think that at a job that you're irreplaceable because everybody's replaceable. Now, what I've always said is that sometimes you have an impact that can't be too easily replaced. That happens, right? That happens where you're so valuable to a company or organization that, yeah, we can bring somebody in to fill that spot, but can you be me? That's true. But Ed Reed hadn't had the chance to be him <laughs> yet. Like, you are, you are a good safety. You, you intercepted Peyton Manning, and that was amazing. But you ain't coached one down yet, and you think you him? That's my problem. And we can't do this at the expense of Bethune Cookman, who you talk people are talking so bad about and oh, they need help. But they thought that they were moving in the right direction, getting Ed Reed to be their coach and rebuild a winning culture at Bethune Cookman for the football program. Then you hire Reggie Theus as the athletic director and the basketball coach. And 
they thought that, hey, these are steps in the right direction to bring these high profile brothers in to help us in building up this program. HBCUs are brilliant. We are amazing. And just like any other institution, we have our flaws, but we still risen above it all. And we need folks to that, that to work with us in athletics, in administration, in academics, in student life, in recruitment, in financial aid, as alumni, as boosters, as donors that want to see HBCUs win. And what you learn at an HBCU is that there are things that are bigger than you. But a lot of these celebrities can't fathom that because, they, because they've been the big dog in every space in the whole entire life. So they can't understand that. But at my HBCU, at Fort Valley State University, and at HBCUs around the nation, you learn that, that you ain't the most important one in the room. Like, like there are things and causes and organizations and institutions that are bigger than you. And we all are working together to build up a strong community, a strong institution, a strong environment. And it's bigger than you. And if folks don't understand that, you're going to continue to get these situations like with Ed Reed. And that's all I really got to say about it. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow HBCU Polls on Instagram and YouTube, at HBCU Polls, Twitter and TikTok, the HBCU Polls. Make sure to listen to HBCU Pulse Radio on Sirius XM Channel 142, HBCU, every Friday. All right, every Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. 4 Central. And also subscribe to HBCU Pulse Radio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. You'll be able to hear it there next day as well. So on Saturdays at 10 a.m., you'll be able to hear the show. Also, last but not least, make sure to watch the HBCU Pulse TV channel on HBCU League Pass Plus. We're channel 201. And also make sure to check out our content on demand. But outside of that, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you on the other side.